The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits. Their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank beneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the field or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put into a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the woods to the baker and bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was a very, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First he ate some lettuces, then some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went looking for some. He went to look for some parsley, but round the end of a cucumber frame, who should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting a young, planting out young cabbages, and walked up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, "Stop, thief!" Peter, who was most dreadfully frightened, rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages, and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went much faster, so that I think he might have gotten away altogether, if he had not had an unfortunate run into a gooseberry net, and got caught up by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a new jack. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons and qu brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew over to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve and intended to pop, he, which he intended to pop on top of Peter, but Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him, and he rushed into a tool shed and jumped into a can, which would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps beneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Kachoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. He tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out the window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath, trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. He was also very damp with sitting in that can. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity, lippity, not very fast, looking all around. He found a door in the wall. But it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the door's step, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, 
but became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his watering cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish, and she sat very still. But now and then the tip of her tail twitched, as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, but little Benjamin Bunny. He went backwards towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttled underneath the bushes, but presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed over a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off of the wheelbarrow and started, started running very fast as he could along the straight walk behind some black currant bushes, but Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the woods outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and shoes to, for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him until he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down on the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I'm, I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made him some chamomile tea. And she gave a dose of it to Peter. One spoonful to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. Thank you for reading with Aunt E. Bye-bye.